My goal in this video is to display a list of comics, maybe 10 comics at most, uh, for the currently selected character that we were able to achieve in the previous video. Uh, and the good news is that we've already got a template for how it should work. We're just going to need to call a different API. We'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, before we do that, while I'm here in the developer portal, we were talking about attribution previously on this page, but there's also uh, something we need to consider with regard to rate limits. Notice here that it says most services default to 1,000 calls per day, but some services may have different rate limits. Hmm. So if this application becomes popular, that means at most only a thousand, it can only be launched a thousand times by all customers combined. Uh, so, uh, and that's a, the best case scenario where every request is, uh, comes through successfully and it doesn't take three or four requests to get all the data that we need. So if this were a real application that I plan on distributing um, to uh, the world at large, I would reconsider the, uh, the way that I go about this. Uh, one of two things. I would either require end users to get their own key, which is kind of, uh, that's a lot of friction in the process, or I might actually create a web service similar to what we did uh, in the UWP weather app. I would make a call from my local app to the web service sitting in Azure or wherever, and it would then go out to the Marvel API, make the necessary call, grab the data, and then cache it locally. Now, you can see that you can, in fact, cache results, save them off locally for a period of time, at most 24 hours. Uh, but as they say, the data does change on a regular basis, so you can't just put it in a database and store it to the end of time. If you do, you're breaking the agreement that you have with Marvel and their usage of their API. And also, we can't just go off and grab the entire database in one shot. Uh, it says only make the calls that you need. So what I, I would understand that to be is to I can make a call for one client and then cash off the uh, the data that I get from him and hold on to it for no more than 24 hours. A second client makes a connection and it requests data and I can grab data for him and cache him as well and then a third client uh, requests data and I can get data for her. And So now I have data from three clients and I'm making these calls. At some point I'm going to get a an error. Where does that specify there? Yeah, you're going to get a return code of 429 which means you've made too many calls. At that point, I can start serving up from my local cache. Does that make sense? That's not what we're going to do in this application, but if I really wanted to use this going forward, that's how I would go about it at a high level. Okay, uh, let's now navigate to our interactive documentation because what I need to do is find a, uh, a, list, of, a list of comics for a given character. And so I spent some time and I went through all of the different APIs I could call and how I could call them. And I settled on the slash public slash comics API. And if you take a look, you can give an optional uh, range of characters. So return only comics which feature the specified characters. It accepts a comma separated list of IDs. Good enough. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to grab the real Spider-Man. The ID for, for Spider-Man is 1009610, and I'm going to limit the number of comics returned to 10. And so let's try that out. All right, it looks like I have all of the data that I need there. Let me see if I can just grab. Now I need to grab that out. Go all the way here to the bottom. I probably should um, restrict this. Actually, let me remake the call again. But I'm just going to limit it to two, to two comics. Why two? Because I don't want just one. I want it to to show a collection, uh, and I don't want ten because it's just too much to give to Jason to C sharp. So let's scroll up and grab all this stuff. We've done this before, right? 
We're just doing it now for comics instead of characters. Great. Okay. Go ahead and copy all that. We'll go to JSON to C Sharp. I want to paste all that in. I'm going to click Generate. And then I am going to scroll to the bottom and copy it all. Control C to copy to my clipboard. And then what I want to do is come over here to my models folder in my solution explorer and I'm going to go to the project menu and select add class and I'm going to call this class comic data wrapper because that is what they call it on their side and I want to use the same term. Then I'm going to highlight the comic data wrapper class stub that they give us and this control V and paste in all of our data and I'm going to rename this to um, comic data wrapper like so. Now you'll notice as we go up here you'll see some red squiggly lines under a few of the uh, a few of the items and the reason for this is that we already have a class named events in the same namespace. Now I could either add put this in a different namespace and, a, and it wouldn't be in hero explorer dot models it would be hero dot explorer dot models dot uh, I don't know comic or I could just simply remove these and rely on the other definition uh, the other definition to work in that case and that's what I'm going to choose to do. I'm going to also remove this item 3 because you'll notice that stories contains a list of items and those items would be individual story items. So I'm just going to delete that. We've already got it. We're already counted for that. I'm going to get rid of events. And in this case, the comic data wrapper will have a uh, reference to data which would be a comet uh, a comic data container which has a list of results and those result objects are comics okay so actually let me go ahead and change that let me change this and let me change this to comic data container and we'll change that as well all right, so that's how our class structure should look now. And then what I'll need to do is go into our facade. And I'm going to create something almost identical to this. Get character data wrapper async. I'm going to do the same thing for comic. So um, in fact, I'm just going to copy all of this, the entire method copy it and then paste it. Now a lot of this will be repeatable so I'm going to pare these down take out the common code that I need and um, and then put that in a helper method. So I have to figure out what it is I need first. Let's go back to our our call here and this is the total the the request URL so I'm going to grab all of this here and uh, I'm going to use that as the URI here replacing pretty much everything that I don't need to API key all right so let's trim off the API key here. And I don't know which, we'll come back with the numbers. I'm gonna limit this to 10. Let's hard code 10 in here for now. And uh, the character, we'll have to pass that in as well. So I think that's it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass in the character. That'll be the first thing we replace. The API key will be the second thing we replace. The timestamp will be the third thing we replace, and the hash will be the fourth thing we replace. So the only thing we're really replacing here is the characters. So this would be a character ID that gets passed in. So uh, we're going to call this get 
comic data wrapper async and we're going to pass in an int character ID and I see they're pretty much identical up to uh, the point when we deserialize that JSON message. So what I could probably wind up doing here is taking all of this code here and putting it into a helper method. So private static string, uh, it'll return the JSON message and this will just be um, call marble. And I'll paste all that in. Now what we'll need to send out Let's see. It's pretty much everything up until that uh, API key. So if we were to pass all of this in, we'll call this um, the URL then I can make a call to call Marvel. Just put it right. Uh, like that. And we can do um, that for now. We'll, we'll come back and replace that in a minute. And let's see what the problem is. Oh, we got to return something here. Yeah, we'll return that JSON message. So we'll just uh, we'll return this. And we'll need to make this async. And which means I'm going to name this async. Now it looks like I have some um, some discrepancy here with the uh, URL. Let's call this the uh, complete URL and we'll pass that in here like so obviously we're not going to be passing in character ID what we'll do instead is pass in the URL okay okay now what right this needs to be needs to return a task of string Perfect. And that should work. So this is going to be called call Marvel async. And what we'll get back is the JSON message. So var JSON message equals await. And then uh, we're going to want to compose that URL. So let's go. to that in just a moment too. All right, so that means I can get rid of this and I can get rid of this character ID. And I can get rid of all that. Now we need to make this I'm going to pass in the URL like that. And that should work. So I'm going to do the same thing up here. We'll keep that URL, but we can rip all of that out. And all of this out. gonna go here get rid of everything here except the offset and I think I may have accidentally deleted the offset 
right, so let me put that back in actually right there. And max characters, yeah, that's a, in, a const. And we're gonna get back, we'll make the call. Okay. So I realize there's a lot of refactoring there, but this is good because now um, all the code that deals with calling marble is in just one uh, one method. But I can get rid of this because that's a, only applicable to one case. Great. Okay, that should work. All right. So the next thing we need to do though is because we copied and pasted a lot of the code from here, let's make this comic data wrapper not character data wrapper right okay and we're going to need to do that here as well comic data wrapper all right i think we got it now what we want to do it's pretty much like what we did here where we have another method um, and we won't need to do quite as much effort uh, we will need to do that whole thing with the thumbnail images right because some of the uh, the images could come back like that so I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna recreate it for comics populate Marvel comic comics async and what we want is an observable collection of comic to be passed in so instead of marvel characters will be marvel comics like so and this will be a comic data wrapper so get characters will be get comic and it may not have been worth it to copy and paste and, and change all these references, but it'll at least we'll get some consistency out of this comic data wrapper async. Did I not call it that? Get comic data wrapper async. Okay, I did. All right, and I got to give it the ID that I want. All right, so uh, we're going to also pass in the ID. So int character ID so we'll give it the character ID like that all right so comic data wrapper dot data dot results equals comics here we're going to go for each comic in comics and then comic dot thumbnail character comic thumbnail that path I'm gonna have to make sure that some of these things are correct um, I'll take a few minutes and look through this as well but I'm pretty sure the same thing applies to comics that apply to characters All right, so now we're gonna call populate Marvel Comics async when a given item is selected. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is actually um, create a new property. So prop, prop, prop tab tab observable collection of comic called Marvel Comics. Awesome. Then I'm going to want to initialize it, right? Marvel Comics equals new observable collection of comic. And then what I'm going to do is uh, Marvel Comics dot clear because I want to get rid of any previous items in it before I make the next call. And then I'm going to I'll call it. And I'm going to pass in. So, uh, 
I'm going to pass in the character ID. So let's uh, select character dot ID. And then I'm going to pass in uh, Marvel Comics, like so. Let's see what the problem is. All right, we need to add async here. What was, was the problem? Ah, I'm kind of a knucklehead there. Marvel facade dot. There we go. Now we're cooking. Now, since we're making the call out to uh, out to the API, what I might want to do is go ahead and reenact the progress ring here. So uh, we'll go ahead and start it here, and then end it down here. All right, let's see if let's see how this works. Oh, I'm a knucklehead. I forgot the most important part of all. All right. All right, and I see an issue here uh, that we already have a definition for comic, and it's dramatically different. So I'm going to actually name this comic book, and the only place I'll need to rename it is here, I think. Well, I guess I'll re need to rename it in a lot of places. Uh, wherever I was depending on it and fortunately it's not that many places um, I will want to reconsider its use here instead of comic we want comic book and I'll need that here as well and then when we pass in the observable collection, it'll be a comic book instead of comic. All right, let's see if that works or if we have other issues. Okay, build. All right, so now on the main page.xaml, I need to bind to that, uh, to that new Marvel Comics collection. All right, so let's... Um, work inside of here. So I'm going to call this list of comics. And I'm going to put another grid. And this is going to be the... Uh, actually, it's going to be a grid view. And I'm going to put that in grid row 1. And uh, let's go ahead and set the item source equal to X bind Marvel comic books and then set the uh, is item click enable equal to true. We'll come back to that later. And then the is item, uh, I'm sorry, item clicked equals new event handler. Again, we'll come back to that later. All right, and here what we're going to do grid view dot item template and then uh, data template. And then I'm going to put the image of the comic book there. So um, the image, let's go ahead and set the x data type equal uh, data dot comic book. And so the source is going to be that large. So um, x bind thumbnail dot large, I think. And we'll make the, um, actually, we'll the small. We want the small one. But that does make me think that maybe I need a different size. OK, we'll come back to that thought in a second here. Uh, we'll make the width equal to 100 and the height equal to 150. 
And that should pretty much wrap that up. Bound there, bound there, that looks good. Uh, here in the facade, when we're populating the comics, I think I want to use a different a different uh, set of sizes here for these. So I want to use portrait in both cases because comic books are arrayed in a portrait, not in a in a standard. Uh, so we'll go medium, portrait, medium, and then portrait, extra large. Okay, that should work. All right, let's build it and see if it works. Uh, failed. I think maybe it's just a naming issue. Let's see. Uh, or what I'm gonna do? Yeah, this just should be Marvel Comics, not comic books. All right. All right. Very good. And let's go. There we go. Look at that, how beautiful that is. It looks like it's having a hard time sometimes with the comics for the same reason. So uh, we'll come back and fix that on the next video because this one's running a little bit long, but um, very cool. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll continue on in the next video and you click on one of these and we'll show uh, the information about a given item, uh, a given comic below it. So we'll do that in the next lesson. We'll see you there. Thanks.